Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have little mess here with me too. Um, beep. <laughs> she didn't think that one could do that again. Um, yeah, today um, is a good day for me personally. Um, I feel right. We have bad weather, so it's a give and take situation, I guess. But I'd rather have bad weather than uh, bad pain. So I thought, why not just dive right into the topic of public health syndrome? And um, I'll just tell you guys what I know about it. If you know something that I don't know, let me know. Because um, that's the only way like we can gather all information together, spread the word, and get that topic out into the world. The more the better. That's all I can say. <clears throat> okay, that was a flying <laughs> thumb. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, uh, what I know about slip of file syndrome is that two doctors from France, Francois, Maurice, Clippel, and Andre File, um, had a patient that came into their hospital in Tenen, I think, um, in the year 1911. And he looked rather strange, so, you know, they had a look at him. Uh, as far as I could read, he, um, his head was resting on his trunk, so he had like the classic the fire fusion. Um, and he actually just complained about having abno abdominal pain. Yeah. Um, the patient's name was L. Joseph, as far as I know. And he was the first documented person with Klippofau syndrome. There are other um, cases that I've read about that go way, 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 way back, um, like before Christ's time, like uh, allegedly King Tut, Pharaoh O2 Densha Moon. Um, they say that he had Klippofau syndrome because when they had like uh, x ray pictures or something, um, they saw that his. He had a fusion in his upper neck and his cervical spine and that his spine was curved, which would mean for me he had a scoliosis too. So he could have been a classical Klippofau syndrome patient person. Um, uh, there was a Catholic cardinal named, well, what's, what, what was his name? From, from the cardinal? Cardinal boop boop. Aha, uh -huh. Carlo de Medici. I hope I didn't butcher that name. Um, they had a, a well-preserved skeleton, or there is a well-preserved skeleton of this cardinal. And after looking at it, they found that he had a, a fusion from C1 down to C7, which means that's his whole cervical spine, I think. I don't know how many vertebrae we have up here. But, um, yeah, he had... a big fusion. Um, with the patient L. Joseph, what they also found is that he had, just a second, because I thought that was, in, that was really interesting for me, he had um, only 12 well-differentiated well vertebrae, um, and they're normally 24, which means that 12 were, were okay and 12 were fused together, which is a lot. So that's why he probably looked like his head was resting on his trunk. Um, there are three types. Um, the classification was made by Clippo and File, and it's still used today. There's type 1, where um, there's a massive fusion of the cervical spine. I wrote that down. I'm just reading off of my paper. Um, type 2 um, is the fusion of one or two vertebrae. And type 3, which I am, is um, a fusion in the thoracic and or lumbar spine. In my case, it's the whole thoracic spine um, and the beginning of the lumbar, I think. But mom, correct me if I'm wrong. And or it can also be in association with a cervical fusion, which I don't have. 
my neck is totally fine um as far as i know it also looks normal on x-rays or in the mri pictures at least no doctor has ever said that my um, cervical spine has a fusion or looks any way different so i would say i don't have that association it's just my thoracic spine that is really fused together and the vertebrae are pretty small um, I'm not sure how many discs I have um, I just know that one disc in my clipophile is bulging out and that causes a lot of pain right now um, as I'm getting older the clipophile is really really changing and it's becoming very hurtful but I'm I'm still happy every day when I get up and I feel my legs because I know that sorry that it is possible for me um that i could be paralyzed one day um that i'm still walking now at the age of 36 is something that the doctors wouldn't even believe is possible because they thought maybe till i'm 30 um but i'm still walking and i'm going to fight the best i can to keep my legs up and going mm, okay what else uh, yeah um, clipophile syndrome patients um, can because we vary like like a rainbow um, just because one looks classic and the other one doesn't does not mean that the person that doesn't look like a clipophile patient doesn't have it I mean, like I said, it could be one vertebrae, it could be everything. We vary from almost looking like nothing's even different to totally super super file. <clears throat> um, what, what can be found is that, of course, um, that it looks like the head is resting on the trunk. Um, the hairline would be way lower because the neck is shorter. What also can occur would be the Sprengel's deformity where, um, it's a, wait a minute, I wrote that down because I couldn't, can I just make a Um, Sprengel's, where did I write that down? Sprengel's deformity. Uh, 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 it's a malposition and displosure of the scabula. I don't have sprinkles, so I'm I'm not <laughs> very uh yeah I don't I don't I just know how it looks but I didn't know what it means I just know that the shoulder blades look different if if you look at someone who has sprinkles like and you look at his back if you have sprinkles you know what I'm talking about if you don't don't even worry about it <coughs> scratch it um. <clears throat> Can you my good? She keeps taking away my paper and I, then I don't have my notes. Um, what also can occur is synkinesia. Yeah, because she's writing it down right here. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I will do have it in German too. Um, facial asymmetry, hearing impairment, ocular abnormalities, um, which would be, for example, my right eye is weaker than my left eye, and sometimes it looks like um, I'm I'm actually looking like 3D. It's like if you like I'm looking like this sometimes. It's it's weird. It's really strange and it's not nice when I have bad days. A cleft palate could happen. Spina bifida, a lung defect. Um, what ash, what what actually can also occur is that the reproductive organs don't work or um, might not even be there. I think that's why the doctor back then when I was 16 said, I will never be able to have a child because he probably thought, okay, flip a foul syndrome, ugh, she won't be able to reproduce. Um, the kidneys can be abnormal, um, congenital heart disease. As you see, a lot of extra illnesses can come up if you have flip a foul syndrome. There are even other um, illnesses that I don't even have on here. 
Um, but I know that other people who have Klippelfau syndrome have. Uh, I know I've heard like from Elas Danilos syndrome, I think is the name. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm not so familiar with the names. I've heard of that or other autoimmune diseases. Um, there's a lot. A lot can be going on if you have Klippelfau syndrome. And since it is so, so rare, um, a lot of these things aren't even documented. It's like when you walk into a doctor's office and you say this and this and this, they don't even, you know, take in consideration that it might be because you have Klippelfau syndrome. So it is, uh, it's, it's, it's hard. Uh, for me, for instance, I feel helpless. Um, it, of course, it's all also hurtful if a doctor says uh, what you're talking about doesn't add up to like how it's supposed to be. Um, okay, just because a, a book says something doesn't mean that my body's going to be that way. I know what I feel. I know how I feel. And... <laughs> Yeah, I have a doctor that said that to me. That's why it, it just popped up in my head. And um, he was trying to tell me, like, how I'm supposed to feel, what it's supposed to be like, and what I'm telling him doesn't add up to, like, how it's supposed to be. I was like, okay, yeah. Different time. Hmm, I think, actually, that is... All I, oh, no, another thing that could pos, could be possible is uh, kyphosis, which means, um, you know, the hunchback. Um, scoliosis, where the spine curves down. And a lordosis, where you have that, um, where it's curved out. When you, you know, when you have like a big booty. Um, but it's more than just a big booty. I have all three. They're all my friends. Um, but the worst I say is the lordosis. Because it, it, it really gets to me. And I'm really curved badly back here. And, um, that hurts the most. So, that's where we're actually working on right now. Is the lower back. Yeah, I think that's all I have right now. Um, if I missed something, um, or there's something, you know, I have no idea about, please feel free to let me know because everything I can learn about this illness is, you know, it's like, like gold to me and um, for everybody else too because we just don't have many sources. And it's hard to gather something if there's nothing there. And we can only learn and, you know, get everything packed up somewhere if we all kind of work together a little bit. So, yeah. I hope this helps a little, gives a little insight. Um, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Thank you. Bye.